Welcome to the channel everyone. My name is Joe Buskins. I'm a second generation professional boat builder and a full-time fishing guide and my family has been building boats and fishing in boats on the northern Gulf Coast for over eight generations. So today we are in the boat shop. We are talking about fiberglassing over plywood. Now you can look over here and see the latest boat our family has built and that is a 100% composite boat. We used a lot of Kusa in that one. But I've been getting a lot of comments that people are like, man, Akusa is awesome, but it's pretty expensive stuff. Now, my father started building boats in the 60s, and a lot of those boats were fiberglass hulls with marine plywood that was fiberglassed over. And many of those boats are still in operation in our area today. So I thought I would take a few minutes and kind of just show y'all what we do to do a quality fiberglass application on plywood. Now, generally, when I was growing up, we used marine fur plywood, A, B, A, C, A, A, but marine fur seems to hold fiberglass really well. And what I like to do is before we even start doing any glass work is, uh, this is your boat builder's friend right there. That is a little high speed Bosch grinder, either in a four and a half or five inch disc. And that's like a 24 grit. Now, a lot of plywood, when you get it to your shop or at your house, it's got a milled surface and you don't always know what it was exposed to during transportation and handling. And then a lot of times it is a very smooth surface. So fiberglass resin kind of depends on two things. There's a chemical bond and then there's a mechanical bond. And when you take an aggressive grinder like this, and I'm gonna demonstrate what kind of surface I would put. Say this is a brand new piece of plywood. You notice I was just holding that disc nice and flat. And if you zoom in there, you can see there's some nice aggressive scratches. That gives the surface what we call a mechanical bond. It allows that resin to get down in there and really grab onto the fibers. Now, you also want to be sure not only is it clean and there's an aggressive texture on there, but you need it to be dry. If it's damp or high moisture content, Resin and water do not mix. It's not gonna stick. Now, I've got a Craftsman heat gun. It's like a commercial grade hair dryer, if you will. You can buy these at Lowe's or most of your good um, home department stores or home stores. I'll link one of those below. Now, what you can do a lot of times before you actually start glassing would be to warm up that surface. Now, you notice I continue to move back and forth and a lot of times i'll come in there periodically and just feel if the material feels warm now sometimes that can take a minute or two you don't want to stay in one spot because those put out an extreme amount of heat there can be a fire hazard there but you can certainly use those or you can put the material out in the sun now what we've got here is a mock-up piece of plywood we've put two layers of three quarter together just screwed together and I've already sanded that. I've already dried that off. And that would be a pretty typical part you may fiberglass. If you imagine if this were the floor of the boat up into the transom, that corner, or if this were a stringer, for example, where you'd be wrapping over that edge, that's pretty typical. Now, once this has got a good texture on it and it's dry, one thing you got to consider is that fiberglass doesn't like crazy sharp corners it has a hard time making that transition over the top of this and even in this corner here what we're going to be doing is softening that hard corner and you can see that is a very very sharp very hard corner now there's a couple ways you can do that again if you've got a grinder you can carefully come in here i'm going to put my glasses on now it'd be a good idea at this point to wear a mask and glasses if you're at home dust is not good getting your lungs but because of doing the youtube stuff it's easier for you guys to hear me and see me but what i'm going to do is put a nice radius All right, you can see that, that's just a nice, soft. I tell people that generally about the radius of a grown man's finger, 
<laughs> I don't know what that would translate to. That's just kind of good old shop terminology, but a nice soft kind of a bull nose surface on there is going to be really, really good. Now, if you're new to the channel and haven't followed along, when we were building our custom 29 footer over there, we used this little Bosch palm router a lot. And it's the same deal. If you look, you can see that the radius on that router bit is about the radius of my finger, somewhere thereabouts. Now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys on the other side here, and dust is gonna fly. There may be dust on the lens. Y'all, I apologize if there is. Just like that. That is super, super easy. Now, a lot of times, even after I've, and either of those can work, certainly, but a lot of times what we'll do is we'll take a little 3M sanding pad and some 80 grit paper, and I will go over those corners and make sure there's no hard or sharp edges. right nice now remember you could do this with kusa as well and they both work equally well and i will probably be doing a video with kusa so we're gonna get okay so this has been textured with a grinder it has been warmed up with the heat gun generally fiberglass is a lot like people as far as its comfort level so to me optimally like 70 to 80 degree temps or i would say mid 60s to mid 80s is kind of optimal with 70 degree temperatures is ideal so today we actually have those kind of temps fairly low humidity about 70 some degrees so what we're going to do is we are going to get ready to mix up some resin and some catalyst and we are going to be priming that wood that is a very very important step so what we've been using over the last several years as far as resin of choice you may want to zoom in there that is a polint isophthalic the dion 6631 and that is a good high caliber what we call an isophthalic it's a polyester resin which is pretty typical most boat resins most boats are built out of polyester resins now a lot of people feel like you have to use epoxy over wood there's nothing wrong with epoxy we've built epoxy over wood skiffs a number of them and it is a premium product, but again, you don't have to use that and it may not always be available. Now we buy resin many times in like 55 gallon drums and we use an awful lot of it. Now the average home, home user is probably not gonna be using that kind of quantity and probably more like five gallons at a time is gonna be pretty typical. And resins come in different colors. It's kind of like tones and wood or lumber for example um this is kind of almost a honey a honey color you may purchase some resin that may be kind of a blue or purple and what we're going to do is we're going to put that just in that little mixing cup there we've got some paddles and then we've got a really cool little container here that's got it's graded, so there's different measurements in there, five cc's, 10 cc's, and so on and so forth. And as you squeeze that, what we have in there is some good high caliber catalyst. Now, most catalyst you're gonna see is just gonna be clear. Um, that is the Norox brand 925. That is kind of what we prefer to use for resin for the most part. And what we do, you can order or buy a red dye that goes in there so that it can turn that red and you can see when you have thoroughly mixed it. Now, generally speaking, you're gonna want one to 2% catalyst per resin ratio. Um, when it's a little bit colder or if we're just doing a thin primer coat, I'm gonna mix it hotter. We're gonna go more like two and a half percent. It's gonna be on the hot side so that it cures a little faster. 
So we've got about a half a quart there, and I'm going to go with about 10 cc's, which, again, that is fairly hot compared to what most people would mix their resin to catalyst ratio. But because we're just doing a thin coat on there, it's going to be quite all right. And you want to mix this until you're absolutely sure it's mixed. And that's one of the great things about the dyed catalyst is that you can see when it has been thoroughly mixed. It'll kind of change colors. It's much darker, kind of takes on a brown tone. Now, I'll probably mix more catalyst or more resin than you would need for this, but that's okay. Now, one thing you can do that there's some debate on is thinning that primer coat that is a styrene monomer um you don't really want to use acetone uh sometimes people will say use acetone to thin to thin resin but that is not really what you want to use acetone is great for cleaning your hands and cleaning tools don't ever really want to use acetone for thinning gel coat or thinning resin styrene monomer would be the correct and you don't need an awful lot it's just a maybe five to ten percent at most that one's got a little crystallization in there it's thickened up a little bit it has a kind of a short shelf life too but you want to thoroughly mix that in and in my opinion you want to thin it after you have uh, already catalyzed it it's usually best to thin any kind of material after it's been catalyzed the reason you would thin it is it's gonna penetrate the wood a little bit better. So on that primer coat, when you're sealing the resin, you can thin it down a little bit. And you see we have really, really, really thoroughly mixed this. Really good. All right. We're just gonna use a bristle brush. That is an inexpensive bristle brush. You can buy those at any of your, um, any of your uh, hardware stores and whatnot. And the same deal, a lot of times before we apply the resin, I may warm up that surface just a little bit. That'll cook any moisture off of there. Blow any dust off. It also warms up that surface. If it is cooler temperatures, it kind of helps warm that surface prior to your resin application. Okay. Now remember, once the resin is catalyzed, you don't have that long, especially if you mix it, mix it hot. You got 10, 15 minutes typically before it starts to gel. And what I'm gonna do is really work that in. Now you can use a roller, but for this first coat, I'm just gonna use a brush. work it in you guys can see the screw holes when we put this together but we're going to work with that in a minute too i'll show you guys what we do with the screw holes and i like working it in multiple directions guys i like working in multiple directions so you can really work the material in this will really improve the quality of your job. I think this is one of the biggest steps that a lot of people skip or they miss would be to really prime the wood and work plenty of resin in there. Don't skimp on the resin. The wood's gonna really soak it up, but that is what really is gonna really, really improve your bond. A lot of times the end grain will really soak it up too. Like on the end of the plywood, you'll notice it'll keep taking resin, taking resin, taking resin. Now, a lot of times what you can do is do your first application, get some resin on there. And as it sits for a couple minutes, it'll draw that resin into the pores, which is what you want. And as long as your resin in your cup is still liquid, it is okay to come back and add more. So what we're going to do, we're going to let this stand for just a few minutes, and then I'm going to come back and we're going to add a second application. You guys don't necessarily have to see that, but you kind of get the gist of it. 
15 minutes or so have passed and I would like for y'all to see now I did mix up too much resin which typically you wouldn't want to do that you wouldn't want to waste it but if you look in there you can see it is not pouring out but it has still got some movement there it's almost like it's in jelly form important to remember if you need a fiberglass and that the more volume or more mass you have as far as the resin or the layers of fiberglass builds heat within itself and the chemical reaction kind of expands and you'll get an exothermic reaction it'll actually start to get hot it'll get warm so it's going to take longer for this thin layer of resin that's on this wood to cure than it's going to take for this matter of fact you can see that that has really started to firm up and if you have a chunk like this believe it or not it'll get so hot it will smoke and you don't want to breathe any of those fumes and you don't want it in your shop so if you ever mix up too much like that one thing you can do you could pour it out on a thinner surface or you just want to be sure to set that container outside and make sure you're not breathing the fumes and get the heat away from anything combustible kind of an interesting note and you would never want to mix up like a gallon of resin at a time in like a small container we usually do pints or quarts and if you put it in a paint pan and spread it out you'll have a longer uh, time before it starts to solidify i'm going to have y'all follow me over to our cutting table and what we've got I'm fortunate enough to have a big table here with glass on a roll and we are gonna cut off some strips or some pieces of mat. Now this is what you call CSM or chop strand mat. If you'll notice, it's just random, random fibers. That is a very popular kind of fiberglass material. Fiberglass, basically all the material is kind of the same as far as its chemical makeup or its structure, but it's put together in different ways to give it different properties. Matte is really, really good at bonding. Um, it does hold more resin, but we like to use it with these feathered edges. It's really good for getting material to lay down. And if you have an aluminum straight edge and a table, you can actually tear this very easily. I'm just rolling it back on itself. Now, some people will use some big scissors and you can you can cut it and that works fine as well obviously if you need a if you need a straight edge you can trim it but i really like to tear it because it gives you a really nice smooth transition i'm going to do that one more time for y'all and a lot of times in our shop when we build a boat or when we lay material down we will finish the last coat will be matte we call it matte. Again, you can call it CSM or whatever makes you happy. Now, again, a nice flat surface for working your fiberglass on is awesome if you've got it. We only need a couple pieces of matte to finish out our little project. But the most popular material these days for folks to work with is going to be a what we call a 1708. That is a by axial some people say by axle by axial glass and if you look in here it actually runs at a 45 degree angle to itself so you basically got two different layers of glass they're strands of glass and they're sewn together and they run at 45 degree angles and what we're going to be doing is several different we're going to be doing several layers of glass now, another mistake people make sometimes is when they're glassing is if you've got a corner you're glassing into and you want three layers, you don't want all three strips of glass to be the same width. You would probably want to do a, a say, a nine inch, an eight inch, and a seven inch in the widths. And that way, the uh, ends of the glass are staggered and you get a nice, smooth transition. So what we do a lot of times is like, say we want a nine inch piece of glass. I like to just use a little sharpie there all right nine inches now this is another part of doing good fiberglass work is planning your work ahead so it's okay to go ahead and pre-cut your glass even before you resin coat or like right now we've got that Just like so. Now that's the thing about the biaxial is it has 
two layers. It's basically like a CSM or the chop strand mat on the back side, and then the woven 45 degree material on the front side. So maybe you guys can see what we're talking about there. There is smoke and you can actually hear it crackling and sizzling down it there. And it's quite hot. I mean, it is, it is quite hot. You can see the vapors coming out of there. Not good. So beware of that. If you're new to working with fiberglass, this stuff can get crazy hot and the fumes aren't great. So you can see the shop, we got open air, have a fan rolling around and be mindful if you mix up a large mass like that, it's gonna kick a lot faster. Now see, this is getting so hot, I can't even touch it. And the resin that we put on the wood is still very tacky. It has not, it has not cured yet. So just keep that in mind. So the resin has tacked off. We've given that about an hour or so, and you see it's not even sticking to my gloves at all. So earlier in the video, we had rounded a radius, that top edge, so the glass will lay over it. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna soften that corner. And we're using a little bit of the Pro Strand. Uh, Y'all have seen me on the boat build. We've used a bunch of that before. That's good stuff. Um, generally speaking, you got whatever size batch of putty you got, it seems like one good line across the top is usually about the right amount. And what we're gonna do is just mix that up let me get out of the shadow a little bit where I got some light. And that's a blue dye in there, so we're going to be mixing that up until the swirls disappear. Now, guys, y'all can use a body filler of any type, just about. Um, you can even make your own. I know a lot of folks like to make their own fillers. Um, you can cut up little bits of short strand chop or add glass fibers, but I have had really good luck with the Napa the pro strand which is a short strand filler and so what we did when we put these two pieces of material together you can see we've got some screw holes and what i want to do is just go ahead and wipe those and you can see it's one wipe in and a wipe across and that's going to fill that's going to fill those nice and tight i don't like those voids if i can help it now we've had a lot of practice at this, guys. Uh, it may take a little practice for you, but generally that's how it should look. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay a bead of this material right down the corner. And I have found that putting some on the blade and then wiping it kind of across as you go, pretty effective. We're going to try to get about the same radius on the bottom corner as we have on the top corner there. And so what I'm going to do, now that we've got some material in there, I'm going to take this flexible blade and just draw it from one end to the other. I'm going to wipe off the excess. Same deal again. Generally, you want to overfill. And then I'm gonna come back and tool the excess off the edges one more time. We don't want a bunch of material out on the edges if we can help it. We want glass making contact there, but we want enough material in there so that the glass lays nice and easy. Remember, fiberglass does not like hard corners. All right. That looks pretty good. So we've got our resin poured in our mixing cup, we've got our catalyst ready. The putty that we applied earlier to fill in that nice radius, which you see is about the same radius as my fingertip there, is kicking off. And so we're gonna add, again, remember as a general rule, depends on what brand you buy. And it's raining. You guys, <laughs> you hear that in the back? Rain is typically not good, but what's nice is the wood is sealed now so that's going to keep humidity out of it we're going to go ahead and get this done in a hurry though before it really starts to rain but generally remember one to two percent um what we're going to do on this batch is closer to the one percent mark 
ish. Now y'all, I have mixed thousands and thousands of gallons of resin and I have found that it'll cure under many, many different ratios. Generally, three quarters of a percent is on the very, very minimum. And I mean, I've seen folks put way more than 2% in and it still works just fine. Just as long as you get it mixed really thoroughly and your temperatures are moderate. Remember you want say mid seventies is optimal. Anything in the fifties is really, really cold. Even sixties, a little bit on the cold side. So I'm gonna spend, I would say a minute or so mixing this. I mean, really, really thoroughly. Hopefully the rain holds off for us. We can get this done for y'all tonight. Okay, so what I'm gonna do at this point though is move on to a pan. And again, if y'all followed any of the boat videos, you know that we work out of a pan. And matter of fact, we've even got a big industrial caliber over there, a big chopper gun or a spray rig. But tonight a roller is fine. So for little applications like putting on the primer coat, a brush is the way to go, but tonight we're using a roller and y'all seen me use this trick before where we use the blue tape. And what that does is it pulls a lot of loose fibers off of these rollers and that keeps it out of your work. And any good, decent quality, matter of fact, glass coater, Corona makes one called a glass coater that we've had really good success with. So our resin is mixed. I'm gonna load our roller in the pan and you can see the pan has just got a nice paint tray in there, a disposable tray. Now this is crucially important. Generally, I'm gonna start in the lower corner first and it is very important to wet that surface with resin again. The roller really works nice and fast. You can cover a lot more ground and y'all, we don't wanna sacrifice quality for speed but you know, I grew up, my family grew up in a boat building business and boats are very, very labor intensive. So if we can do it efficiently, the faster we can do it, the better it is. So you'll notice this is the thinner piece. So we're doing with two coats of the 1708 biaxial and we're going with the narrower piece first. And I'm just gonna split that and I can use my gloved hands to kind of work that into the corner and we've got resin underneath it. We've got a roller loaded up here and I'm gonna start in the corner first. Typically what I will do is push that roller right into the corner first and then work out from there. Now don't worry if you don't see it get fully saturated like immediately. It takes a minute for the glass to soak up the resin. So it is quite all right to get some resin on there and give it a minute. Matter of fact, you can see that color change already from where we first went in to our second pass. And a lot of times the best thing to do is just give it a moment to just absorb that resin. And then you're using a roller to work it back and forth. That kind of agitates it, but agitates it in a good way. This is good, <laughs> good agitation. Now you don't want a super resin rich mixture either. So there is a, a ratio that's gonna be optimal, but you'll kind of see when the glass has got enough resin, it goes semi-transparent and that's looking pretty good. That's looking pretty good. Now, this is gonna be one of your next little tools, one of your friends, that's a grooved roller. That one, again, you notice is about the same diameter as my finger, so that kind of fits the radius. And what I'm gonna do, I'm over here on this side there, Logan, I'm gonna go right up in the corner and then work my way out. You can actually even hear it kind of crackle a little bit as the air bubbles. And light pressure, you know, it doesn't take, you don't have to jab super aggressively. And I tend to work pretty fast, again, because we grew up building boats and man, we applied a lot of material. And this stuff, once you put the resin in it or the catalyst in the resin, you've 
only got about 15 or 20 minutes typically of work time. That looks good. As a matter of fact, you can see there's some transparency. You can see the green filler through the glass. I'm gonna set that little hard roller to the side and we're gonna go to our next wider layer there. You can see that's gonna overlap the first piece and I'm just splitting it right down the middle, basically a 50-50, 50 on the top, 50 on the bottom. And again, remember folks, you wanna wanna wear some latex rubber gloves is going to be the way to go. Um, I have had good success with the Value Touch brand. Um, latex rubber will hold up. It doesn't melt too bad at all doing this kind of work. All right, now the second layer usually goes on better than the first because there's a base of resin there. And that resin is your friend. You can see that line right there. That is where the previous layer stopped. But what that does is gives you a nice gradual transition. You don't have a hard line and you don't want to stack all these layers and where they all end at the same place. It would be a bad thing. That would create what we call a hard point. All right, and remember, it takes a moment for the resin to soak up into the glass, so it's okay to apply the resin and then work it back and forth. You can see it going more and more transparent. So we've got the second layer saturated, and we're gonna come back with the groove roller once again, and we're working from the middle out. So for a lot of applications, two layers of biaxial glass may be enough. In a heavier application like a stringer, you may want to go three or four. Kind of depends. There's not like one set rule. Sometimes one layer of biaxial is going to be adequate. And what we're going to do is put one over the top at this point. Now a lot of folks that are new to fiberglassing may say, well man, I'm going to take one big piece and I'm going to start down here on the floor and go up the corner and around and over the top. I'm here to tell you that doesn't work very well. When you tuck it in one corner, it's gonna pull it from another. It's very, very challenging to do. So what you're gonna to want to do is do it in multiple pieces. And when you lay in it over the top of the stringer or your plywood, if you wet the corners first, the corners that are gonna bend, that is gonna to be to your advantage. That's gonna help you get this glass to lay down nice and easy. And a lot of times what we will do is we will wet it and you just give it a second. It'll start to melt. What happens is there are actually chemicals in the fiberglass material itself. It's called, they're called binders. And they kind of keep that glass held together when it's on a roll. But when you're applying it on your boat or your repair job, you need it to conform. And the resin actually melts those little binders. But it takes a moment. It takes a moment. It's kind of like a solvent reacting on something. It takes a moment for it to... And you'll notice this layer overlaps to about where the first layer came up from the side. Well, nice smooth transitions is what we're trying to do. We're trying to make it so that you don't have big, big lumps and bumps. And you can see now this glass has started to want to bend. And it has started to soften up a little bit. That's a good thing. Now, if you were doing this in your actual boat, again, you may want to do both inside corners and then you would cap it that is typically how we would do it is we would do the bottom or the lower ones and we typically start with the smaller or narrower panel and work out to the wider one that looks really really good now if you want to be super meticulous again you can hit this every time with your grooved roller and it's just light pressure back and forth we're just trying to work that air out 
and the glass will go transparent when that is the case. Important to work with manageable areas too and have some help. Many times I've got my son or my brother here at the shop to help hand pieces and also having everything ready. You notice this little area here, we've kind of got everything staged and ready so that as we're working, we're not wandering around searching and looking. Okay, so you can see this layer from the top came down to that line. Same deal on this one. I'm going to split it right over the middle. So as you can see, the resin has really saturated in nicely. And I'm using this little three quarter inch grooved roller to really smooth things down. This is time well spent. When we are finished laminating and we want to make a compartment look nice and finished, Typically our last coat of fiberglass is going to be matte and you guys may or may not have done that before. It's just one of those things. It does add some strength, yes, but it's mostly a cosmetic thing. And again, you can see instead of trying to do this in one big continuous pieces, you will find that it's much, much easier to glass in smaller pieces and let them kind of seam and overlap. And I know this is a pretty in-depth uh, tutorial, folks. It's hard to do this in a hurry or to skimp on it if you're trying to do it right. And uh, our family has always worked really, really hard to do quality glass work and make sure that you don't have any failures you don't have things come apart. Like I said, I've got some boats here locally that my father built in the 60s that are still in service. Maybe one of these days I can go do a tour of them and show, show you folks some of our older boats that have been around, but they were all done in plywood and glass with polyester resin. If wood is sealed from moisture and oxygen, it will last a very, very, long time Let me go over that with one more little coat what i love about a roller though is it's fast and it picks up puddles of resin and moves it to dry areas so it's just a really good way to get an efficient job and i've had a lot of practice again i've been doing this since i was a boy i've literally grown up in a boat shop now a brush is great. Occasionally what we'll do is we will come back with a brush in like a hard corner like that if you haven't. And there's actually some little bubbles in there that as I dab, you can see those bubbles coming out, but it's just a light, delicate touch. I'm not forcing. Our family always called that dabbing. We'll do the same thing in this corner just a little bit. Very nice. Now, if you want to get down and really give this thing a nice job. Now, what I did, y'all, is I rinsed that little groove roller in my acetone bucket. That's something you're probably going to want on your job site. And I've got a little bit of clean acetone there in that little squeeze bottle. What will happen is the resin will get tacky if it's been sitting for a little while. So, I'm going to start at the top. Just nice, light pressure. And I'm going to push down from the top to the bottom. And we're just working that air out almost as if you were squeegeeing. Working a squeegee or if you've ever seen anybody install like vinyl decals, you're just trying to work the, work the air out. But it's light pressure. It's hard to describe how much pressure, but it's not a heavy, it is not a heavy hand. All right, we're gonna do this side and I know the light is much better. One nice thing about these groove rollers, it'll also smooth out any lumps or ridges. I don't know if you guys could see where the material overlapped, but if you just take your time and work, 
this roller, it will blend those edges together. And man, it makes some pretty glass work. I mean, just beautiful. I'm gonna start in this corner here. You gotta be super careful not to push too aggressively in the corner. It's okay to have a little sheen of resin on top. I don't like big puddles of resin and I don't really like to see dry fibers exposed either. Dry fiberglass fibers are not a good thing. But you can see how the mat just really smooths. Now, it did, the mat didn't make it quite out to this edge here, but you can see again here in the middle, we had overlapping layers of the 1708, and it is hard to tell where that transition is. And if this were a finished compartment and you wanted to sand that and gel coat it, the mat is gonna give you a much, much better finish. Now, sometimes we'll even come back after the glass is cured and we'll brush on or roll on one more coat of resin as a filler. That'll kind of smooth things out even further, but you wanna be careful about not stacking too much resin on as it's curing. So, y'all, I know that was a lot. Um, and I'm gonna tell you something, I'll be super honest. We do this all the time, but sometimes when you're doing these videos, I may have left out something, or maybe there's a tip or a hint or something you guys have done before um, that you found helpful. And uh, you know, we're always in, appreciate the comments and the feedback. So if you guys wanna comment down below, and if you found the video helpful, the subscribe, subscribe to the channel, like, comment, share, all that stuff, that help, helps keeps us doing more of this kind of stuff. So y'all, um, I hopefully, that showed you guys how to fiberglass over plywood in detail. You guys let me know if I did a good job. It's Captain Joe here with Island Marine Charters down in Gulf Shores, Alabama. Fish Bump TV here on YouTube. And as always, we will catch you guys next time.